Hello there! I'm talking to you from the brand new iPhone 12 Pro, and that is the Samsung Note 20 Ultra. And after spending 112 days in coronavirus lockdown in Melbourne, Australia, we can now finally go out again. And this is our real-world camera comparison of the Apple's iPhone 12 Pro with the Samsung's Note 20 Ultra. Now before we start, let's go through some of the camera hardware. There are 5 cameras on board each of these flagship phones. They both have an ultra-wide, wide and telephoto camera. And this year, both manufacturers even included a time-of-flight camera that uses lasers to sense depth and see better at night. And of course, they both have a front selfie camera. On the iPhone 12 Pro, you'll get a 23mm 12 megapixel camera with f2.2 and on the Note 20 Ultra, you'll get a 26mm 10 megapixel camera also with f2.2. And because the iPhone 12 Pro has a shorter focal length, you can see that it has a slightly wider angle of view. They both record impeccable audio as you have heard from the intro earlier. We're finally out after 112 days and we've just registered three days of zero coronavirus. So pretty exciting to get out but not a lot of people around the street. We're just testing the front-facing camera. And it's really nice and crisp even without an external mic. And they both have audio zoom. The front selfie cameras on these two phones can record up to 4K at 60 frames. I do prefer how the iPhone 12 Pro's front-facing camera is handling the exposure of the harsh direct sunlight. The video that it produces has more contrast as opposed to the Note 20 Ultra's where it looks a bit washed out. It does come down to a bit of personal preference, so do share with us what you think in the comments section below. Now, let's move on to the ultra-wide lens. This is a photo of the iconic Flinders Station in Melbourne, Australia. And after being in one of the longest coronavirus lockdown in the world, Flinders Station is beginning to look like it's all self again. Both of these phones have a 13mm ultra-wide lens giving them both the same angle of view. But if you look closely at the edges, both of them are also susceptible to a bit of distortion. But given how stunning these two photos are, I doubt you'll be looking too closely at the edges. And in these two photos, you can see that both of them are using their HDR systems to balance out the brightness from the sun from overexposing the shot, while dialing back the shadows just enough to preserve detail and to keep the image sharp and in contrast. The Note 20 Ultra appears to dial in more shadows while the iPhone 12 Pro dials it back. And that's because when we were taking this photo, we triggered the iPhone's Deep Fusion feature. Now Deep Fusion is a little bit like Smart HDR but on steroids. Where Smart HDR is meant to help us capture the perfect exposure during bright situations and night photography during low light situations, Deep Fusion was created to fill in this gap here. Which means it is perfect for medium light situations like these. And before we even took this shot, the iPhone 12 Pro was already buffering 4 standard exposures, plus another 4 short exposure shots. And then when we press that shutter button, it takes one long exposure shot, and then it processes all that 9 images on its new A14 Bionic chip, selecting the best exposures and then stitching all that 24 million pixels back to create this perfectly exposed image that is sharp and still maintains a high level of detail in the shadows. And remember, it did all this in less than a second. It is, as what Phil Schiller said, It is computational photography mad science. Now this next image here was also shot with Deep Fusion triggered. But as you can see during bright situations, the effect is quite minimal. The differences here is that the iPhone offers a warmer tone in white balance, while the Samsung offers a cooler look. The Note 20 Ultra does come with a slightly larger aperture of f2.2 compared to the iPhone's f2.4, which may be the reasons why the Note 20 Ultra was able to capture a bit more light coming off the areas underneath the bridge and around the trees. The next shot here, we shot directly at the sun, and again, both cameras handled the exposures really well. The iPhone did a better job in managing the flare from the sun, but its f2.4 lens meant it loses out on picking up on some of the details here. I think in terms of ultra-wide lens, the results are very close. The Note 20 Ultra has a slightly larger aperture while the iPhone uses computational photography to help it bridge that gap. Now, 
Let's take a look at the main shooters. For the wide lenses, they both have the same focal length at 26mm, but the Samsung carries a crazy 108 megapixel sensor with f1.8, while the iPhone 12 Pro only has a 12 megapixel shooter with a slightly larger aperture at f1.6. Straight away here, you will notice that the image from the Note 20 Ultra is struggling to get enough exposure for the shot. And that's because in order to squeeze 108 megapixel into a tiny smartphone sensor, Samsung has had to reduce the size of the pixels. But you can drastically improve the quality of this image here by shooting in the pixel binning mode. And by doing that, you effectively combine every 9 pixels on the 108 megapixel sensor into one pixel, allowing it to capture more light. But you will be reducing the resolution to a 12 megapixel photo. Now, if the conditions are bright enough for the 100 megapixel sensor to capture sufficient light, it is able to produce the same quality photo as the one shot in the pixel binning mode. For example, this image here, and because it's a 108 megapixel photo, it gets the added benefit of preserving incredible amounts of detail. And to preserve all this information, you will need a lot of storage. And it's a good thing that the Note 20 Ultra comes with expendable storage. But if you don't need to preserve every single detail in your shots, I would suggest just shooting with the pixel binning mode turned on, as you'll get better quality photos regardless of lighting situations. Now, let's move on to autofocus. The S20 Ultra, which was released earlier this year, has a known problem with autofocus. And to fix this problem, Samsung has included a time of flight camera with lasers on the Note 20 Ultra. The iPhone 12 Pro also has a similar setup, and we can report that both of them produces quick, snappy and accurate autofocus. These macro photos here were shot without using the portrait mode, and despite the iPhone 12 Pro having the larger aperture at f1.6, I find myself leaning towards the images shot by the Note 20 Ultra, as it appears to have a higher quality of bokeh. Now, we also shot these using portrait mode, which means both cameras will be using their lasers and computing power to create artificial bokeh. On the iPhone 12 Pro, it appears that the software is trying to apply a bit too much beauty mode. You can see in the picture here that it is even trying to soften the texture of the t-shirt. And it likes to reflect colors of the environment back onto the subject. So for example, if you're in a green environment, your skin may look greener than it actually is. In terms of edge detection, the technology has come a long way, but it can still struggle with glasses, especially if you wear reflective and transparent ones, and sometimes also with a bit of hair. The new iPhone 12 Pro can now shoot portrait mode with night mode turned on, which is a terrific feature. Overall, I still prefer the photos shot from the Samsung Note 20 Ultra. Which one do you prefer? Please let us know in the comments section below. Now as for the telephoto camera, the Note 20 Ultra has a 5x optical zoom with a focal length of 120mm, whereas the iPhone 12 Pro only has a 2x optical zoom. Digitally, the Samsung can zoom up to 50x. The image isn't great though, but it is there for whatever reasons that you may need it for. The iPhone 12 Pro can only digitally zoom up to 10x, but if you're shooting videos, the Samsung Note 20 Ultra can only shoot up to 20 times digital zoom, while the iPhone 12 Pro can only reach 6. So, if you need a camera with a longer reach, the Note 20 Ultra is the obvious choice in this category. Now for videos, the iPhone 12 Pro can shoot up to 4Ks at 60 frames with all its rear cameras. The Note 20 Ultra on the other hand can shoot 8K videos on the 100 megapixel sensor and then up to 4K at 30 with the ultra wide and telephoto lens. Both can shoot slow motion videos. The iPhone 12 Pro will let you shoot slow motion videos at 240 frames with all the rear cameras and then up to 120 frames with its selfie camera. The Note 20 Ultra can only shoot slow motion videos with its main shooter, but it will let you shoot up to a thousand frames per second. Video stabilization is good on both cameras. 
you can record and walk at the same time without using a gimbal and it will not produce a shaky footage. We also tried video stabilization with time lapse, and in this test, the Note 20 Ultra performed a lot better. These two cameras can even record HDR content, which will allow you to see more colors from your videos. Samsung uses HDR10+, while Apple uses Dolby Vision HDR. We weren't able to put these into our standard definition video, so we will be including a link in the video description so you can download the samples to check it out yourself. In terms of video quality, I would say the iPhone 12 Pro has a slight edge over the Note 20 Ultra. It is better at managing noise, and it has really outstanding low-light performance. We managed to shoot photos of this Ferrari with night mode on both cameras, but only the iPhone 12 Pro could pick it up when shooting videos. It is really quite stunning. We took out our iPhone 11 Pro, and this was what it was able to see. Uh, just film this to me. <laughs> Crazy. Jeez. It's ridiculous, right? Yeah. How does the iPhone do this? I don't know, man. <laughs> I can't see. <laughs> and to find out how much more the iPhone 12 Pro could see at night, we tried our hands on some amateur Astro time lapse. The footage from the iPhone 12 Pro is a bit noisy, but it can see stars light years away from us. The Note 20 on the other hand could not see a thing until daybreak. Now despite all the high praises on low light performance, we did find one annoying thing about this iPhone 12 Pro, and it's to do with this lens flare. It is most annoying when the flare is in the middle of the subject, and it occurs mostly on the wide and telephoto lens. The ultra-wide lens seems to have it under control. So while the iPhone 12 Pro will blow your mind when it comes to low-light performance, especially with video, its lens system is very prone to flaring up. Now as for which phone you decide to pick up may rest on your personal preference, the ecosystem you have at home or at work, or your budget. As for the camera systems, we hope we have showed you enough of the camera technology in these phones to help you make up your mind. So if you have enjoyed this video, please don't forget to leave us a thumbs up and please do consider subscribing for more videos like this. Do share with us which camera did you prefer in this comparison. Thank you for watching, we will see you in the next one.